In this video, we'll look at 10 WWE wrestlers currently rotting in jail and the reasons why. Brian D.T. Porter McGee Brian McGee, famously referred to as D.T. Porter in the ring, was arrested for a murder that nobody saw coming. It all started in July of 2013 when the former WWE star attacked his girlfriend while they were outside their apartment. Brian inflicted many wounds and the young woman tragically passed away as a result. Police were alerted to the crime when Brian made posts on social media and seemed to be bragging about what he had just done. When police arrived, they found the woman's body, but Brian was already fleeing the scene. Police chased him down and quickly caught up with him after he crashed his car. Local authorities took Brian to the hospital afterwards and arrested him once he was found to be healthy and unhurt. Police charged Brian with first-degree murder, and his trial was scheduled for later in 2013. During his first court appearance, Brian's lawyer requested that the defendant be granted bail. This request was denied, and instead the judge determined that he should remain behind bars. The trial would commence later that year and dragged on until July of 2016. At that point, the jury gave a guilty verdict against Brian for his actions. During the sentencing, the judge decided to issue the maximum sentence due to the severity of the crime and because he had apparently bragged about them after the fact on social media. Brian was sentenced to life in prison and he was denied any opportunity to receive parole. In issuing the sentence, the judge said that life imprisonment should mean life and no less. In Brian's case, that will certainly prove accurate. Be sure to stick to the end to see the wrestler languishing behind bars for receiving nearly $50,000 from the Mississippi government. If you thought that McGee's story was crazy, wait till you hear this next one. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more amazing videos. Harrison Hardbody Norris Harrison Hardbody Norris became infamous when the public found out about his dark secret, and it all ended in a lifetime prison sentence. It all started when local authorities in Georgia noticed something strange going on with Harrison. They found that he was living with several females at his house, and many of them were being held against their will. Georgia authorities brought these shocking rumors to the attention of the FBI, and they decided to take swift action. In August of 2005, the FBI raided both of Harrison's homes in Georgia. They found that the rumors were true, and eight women were being held by Harrison. They detailed stories of mistreatment, abuse, and manipulation. The FBI arrested Harrison in October of 2005 on several counts of trafficking women for indecent acts. Harrison was put behind bars and awaited his trial. When the time for a trial finally came, however, he made a stunning decision. Harrison decided that he would reject an attorney and represent himself in court. This was highly unusual, especially since Harrison didn't have any legal experience. He was legally allowed to do this, though, and the trial went ahead with Harrison acting in his own legal defense. During the trial, things only got worse and worse for Harrison. The women held in his complex shared stories that he did many bad things to them. One woman claimed that Harrison had a series of commandments and that he sold them to people in the local area. Another woman also mentioned that Harrison would manipulate them often and made them pay if they broke any rules around his house. By doing this, Harrison kept all of the women in debt, so they had no choice but to do what he asked. Harrison defended himself against these accusations, claiming that all of the women came voluntarily. He alleged that his house was meant as a training location for up-and-coming wrestlers, and that he helped many of them improve and turn their lives around. Unfortunately for Harrison, the jury didn't buy his version of the events. They rendered a guilty verdict against Harrison. He was sentenced to life in prison in April of 2008 and will be behind bars for the rest of his life. Eugene Buck Zumhoff Eugene Zumhoff, popularly known as Buck and the King of Rock and Roll, came under the scrutiny of law enforcement after they discovered that he was engaging in illegal activities with minors, just like another WWE wrestler coming up later in this video. This led to him being arrested in May of 2013 and he was charged with 12 felonies for criminal indecent misconduct. 
The charges stemmed from Eugene's actions with his daughter, and a trial was quickly scheduled as a result. Things wouldn't go well for Eugene during the trial, though, and it only led to more bad news for the former WWE star. During the trial, Eugene's daughter laid out everything he had done to her. This testimony convinced the jury, and they chose to convict Eugene on all charges. After the verdict was read, Eugene tried to escape the courthouse in a rush. He ran past the guards and tried to sprint down the hall and out of the building. Eugene's efforts were unsuccessful, and officers of the court tackled him on his way out. As a result of this stunt, Eugene was given an additional charge for attempting to escape from custody. Following the guilty verdict and Eugene's surprising attempt to escape the courtroom, the judge decided to take harsh action. Eugene was sentenced to 25 years of jail time, which meant the former WWE star would be in prison until his 80th birthday. The defense argued that this ruling was too punitive, but the judge disagreed. This is an extreme sentence, the judge said, but Mr. Zumhoff's actions were nothing less than extreme. Eugene is currently serving his sentence and will be doing so for many more years to come. Tammy Sunny Sitch Listen, you Sunny wannabe. What Sonny wants, Sonny gets. Tammy Sitch, known in the ring as Sonny, entered into serious trouble with law enforcement when she got into a severe car crash. Tammy was driving a lot over the speed limit at the time and was also under the influence. All of this meant she couldn't control her vehicle, and as a result, her 2012 Mercedes-Benz crashed into the backside of a 2013 Kia Sorento when it was stopped at a light. The crash was so severe that the man driving the Kia Sorento tragically lost his life, and this was very bad news for Tammy. She was transported to the hospital by authorities, and they took some blood for medical analysis. During the analysis, medical professionals learned that Tammy had a very high blood alcohol level, which meant she was driving under the influence of alcohol. Medical professionals determined that Tammy's blood alcohol content was over three times above the legal limit, and they brought this to the attention of local authorities. Law enforcement responded to this news by arresting Tammy in May of 2022. They charged her with driving under the influence as well as manslaughter. Tammy made bail by paying over $200,000, but a judge would revoke it less than a week later. In revoking the bail, the judge claimed that Tammy was a danger to the community. Tammy remains behind bars as she awaits trial and could face decades of jail time if found guilty. Patrick Velveteen Dream Clark Patrick Clark, known in the wrestling community as Velveteen Dream, was arrested for the first time in August of 2022. The arrest stemmed from an incident at Patrick's local gym, and you might not expect he would wind up behind bars for what he did. It all started when a gym employee told Patrick he needed to leave an area of the gym. According to that employee, that particular area of the gym was being closed for routine cleaning and maintenance. Unfortunately for that employee, Patrick didn't take too kindly to the request. Instead of leaving the area as he was asked to do, he got angry and started arguing with the employee. As the situation escalated, the employee asked Patrick to leave the gym. Instead, Patrick made a huge mistake that would lead to jail time. When Patrick was asked to leave the gym, he became even angrier. Instead of quietly leaving, he threatened the employee's life. As if that wasn't bad enough, Patrick also attacked the employee. He punched the man in the face, and the two started a physical altercation. While the two were fighting, another employee called the police. They arrived not long after, and what they found was truly unexpected. When the officers arrived, the two men were bruised and clearly looked a little worse for wear. The authorities examined the employee and were shocked to find teeth marks on his body. According to the employee, Patrick had bitten him during the fight. This was enough for the officers to arrest Patrick and bring him to the station for questioning. Patrick would later be charged with first-degree battery and sent to jail in August of 2022. Later in August of that same year, Patrick would make bail at $1,200 and was released from jail. However, he had a court appearance scheduled for September of 2022. Instead of going to it, Patrick had his lawyer submit a not guilty plea and waive the entire appearance. 
While this was going on, he made posts on social media claiming his innocence. Unfortunately for Patrick, he was found guilty of violating probation on his previous arrest in September of 2022. This led to additional jail time, and he will likely stay behind bars for the time being. The WWE has stated Patrick will not be coming back, mentioning his previous arrests with drugs on top of the recent debacle. And it looks like the former WWE wrestler will have a tough time getting back into the ring. If nothing else, his upcoming trial for battery and other charges might see him avoid jail time if he can play his cards right. If you thought Patrick's fight was crazy, you won't believe the WWE wrestler who went to jail for stealing millions in an historic welfare fraud case, Teddy Hart. Teddy Hart has been in and out of jail many times during his life and is currently behind bars due to a previous arrest. Teddy was arrested in October 2020 while residing in Texas. Law enforcement charged him with inflicting harm on a disabled individual, possessing an illegal narcotic, and evading arrest. Teddy wasn't well regarded by local authorities who referred to him as a fugitive from justice back in May of 2020. Nevertheless, the court went fairly easy on Teddy in this trial. In the end, he was only sentenced to 10 days of jail time in a county jail. Unfortunately for Teddy and the court, this lenient sentence wouldn't be his last. Only a year later, he would be arrested for nearly the exact same crimes. Teddy was incarcerated yet again only a year later in February of 2021. This time, Teddy had been residing in the state of Virginia. Although he was charged with possession of an illegal narcotic, the court documents didn't state which one it was at the time. Needless to say, a man with a record like Teddy's won't be seeing the outside of a cell for quite some time. Ken Nightmare Wayne Ken Wayne, known in WWE as Nightmare, came under suspicion when local authorities received a tip that he was in possession of illegal images of minors. Following this revelation, law enforcement searched his home in September of 2014. Sure enough, they found illegal images of minors on Ken's computer. This was enough to arrest the former WWE wrestler. Ken was charged with possession of illegal images of minors and sentenced to a total of 20 years jail time. However, the defense came to an agreement with the prosecution and judge that allowed the former WWE star to avoid two decades behind bars. In February of 2016, Ken pleaded guilty to the charges. In return, he was allowed to serve only five years of his sentence behind bars. The rest would be spent under house arrest. On top of that, Ken had to pay $2,000 to nonprofit organizations as well as register as a sex offender in his home state of Mississippi. Ken is still in house arrest as of today and won't be getting out anytime soon. Kane Velasquez Kane Velasquez was arrested for attempted murder after a stunning shooting that took place in California, and you won't believe what he's up to right now. According to witness reports, the incident began when Kane was driving on the road. He spotted a man named Harry Goulart Jr. in another car, and this made him extremely angry. Harry had engaged in indecent relations with one of Kane's relatives, who happened to be underage. While Harry faced criminal charges for this, he remained out of prison at the time. Kane decided to take matters into his own hands when he saw the man on the road and took a course he wouldn't be able to reverse. Kane drove up to the car that had Harry inside and began to chase it down. Harry noticed Kane approaching and tried to evade him. This led to a car chase that lasted for over 11 miles and went on at very high speeds. Kane eventually closed in on Harry's car, rammed into it, and fired several rounds at it. Although he was aiming for Harry, he missed and hit his father instead. The old man was severely injured, but in the end, he would make a recovery. Following this event, police arrived and detained Kane for attempted murder and several other criminal charges relating to his firearm. The WWE wrestler could face serious jail time unless he could find a way to win in his trial against all odds. After being put behind bars in February of 2022, Kane made three requests for bail. All three were rejected by authorities, who insisted that the former WWE wrestler remained a danger to the community. In response to this, Kane's lawyers brought up the special circumstances of the case, 
They provided over 30 letters of support from people in the WWE community, as well as testimony from the minor that Harry had been indecent with. Although this didn't convince the judge presiding over the case to grant bail, Kane's lawyers believed they might find better luck arguing before the District Court of Appeals. Kane's lawyers appealed his request for bond to the District Court of Appeals for the 6th District, asking him to be released pending a trial for the attempted murder charges. Kane appeared before the court in September of 2022 and pleaded not guilty to all the charges against him. While the district court didn't necessarily agree Kane was totally cleared, they did agree that he should be granted bond. In November of 2022, they allowed him to make bail for a whopping $1 million. Kane paid this bail the next day and walked out of jail for the first time in months. Unfortunately for him, he remained under house arrest as part of his bond agreement. Kane would have to stay at home, with very few exceptions, until his trial took place. Despite this, law enforcement allowed him to travel to Lucha Libre AAA Worldwide, a prominent wrestling event. Kane had to be escorted by police in order to go, but he took part in the match in December of 2022. During the event, Kane received huge applause from the whole audience. While he remains in legal trouble, many were sympathetic with Kane and respected his actions to stand up for a young relative. Do you think Kane did the right thing? Let us know in the comments below. Devin Hannibal Nicholson Devin Nicholson, known in the ring as Hannibal, was arrested in August of 2022. Law enforcement charged him with assault, and the claim stemmed from an incident where he attacked a woman. This wasn't the first time Devin had faced legal trouble over physical violence. He got into trouble back in 2021. In December of that year, Devin stabbed a WWE referee and gave him several injuries. The referee had to post a GoFundMe page to pay for medical treatment after the fact, and Devin faced a wave of negative press for his actions. This time around, Devin faced legal issues as well as bad press. After his arrest by Canadian authorities, he has remained under supervision while awaiting trial. Devin could face several years behind bars if found guilty, and a lot will depend on his upcoming trial. Brett DiBiase Brett DiBiase was arrested for his part in a multi-million dollar welfare fraud case, and you won't believe what he did. Brett DiBiase was arrested by Mississippi authorities when he became wrapped up in the single largest public embezzlement case in the state's history. According to local authorities, around $5 million in the state's public welfare fund was used illegally and fraudulently. The funds were meant to go to people in financial need. Instead, people in the Mississippi government awarded the money to celebrities, government officials, and wealthy elites. Brett was one of the beneficiaries of this corruption, and he received nearly $50,000 from the Mississippi government. According to the authorities, Brett received $50,000 from the Mississippi Welfare Fund despite having lots of money to spare. The money was officially for a job contract, but Brett admitted in court that he'd never even started the job the money was supposedly for. The money went toward his luxury rehab stay, and whatever remained after that went straight into his bank account. After Brett was arrested, trials began for many of the other ringleaders in the embezzlement scandal. During the trial, many more surprising stories came out about just how crooked the entire fund was. Prosecutors revealed that Brett had forged documents, made fake invoices, and had even staged entire events to cover up the deceit behind his $50,000 corruption handout. Prosecutors showed that Brett had faked a class on drug awareness, when in reality, he never even taught the class once. All of this was bad news for Brett, but he had at least one way to avoid serious jail time. Although Brett was neck deep in fraud and corruption during this whole embezzlement scandal, this also gave him a key advantage. Brett had tons of crucial information that could help the prosecution's case and lead to many more arrests of people responsible. If he could turn in the people who embezzled the money, it might even be possible to recover some of that money for the victims. As a result, Brett made himself available to the prosecution. In return for his cooperation, they agreed to lessen his sentence and delay his trial until after the other ringleaders were brought to justice. Brett also agreed to pay $5,000 in restitution to the families of those hurt by his fraudulent actions. 
Brett remains behind bars, but his sentencing is currently on hold as he works with authorities on the Mississippi embezzlement case. During this time, Brett has secured decades-long time convictions of many of the big players in the case. Time will tell if he avoids serious jail time, but if nothing else, Brett has done much to bring down the ringleaders of Mississippi's corruption crisis. Click here to see 10 WWE wrestlers such as Ric Flair and Stone Cold Steve Austin you had no idea rotted in jail. See you there.